Greetings and welcome, dear viewers, to this, an alien world, and to the game Factorio. Now, Factorio is developed by a small team hailing from Prague, a team which includes a hedgehog, I might add, who is apparently rather good at listening and finding bugs. Skills that I can confirm from having kept hedgehogs in the past when I was younger, hedgehogs do have in abundance, though typically the hedgehogs I've met have been more interested in bugs, i.e. the creepy crawly kind, not the ones and zeros kind. But nevertheless, on the website it does claim that the hedgehog is part of the team and does find bugs in the code, and I for one am inclined to believe them. Because, I mean, apart from the fact that it makes the world seem like a more interesting place, who would lie about a bug-finding hedgehog? Really? That's almost as bad as lying about having foxes. But I digress. Factorio is, in a nutshell, a 2D game about building and maintaining a vast automated factory complex on an alien and often inhospitable world. Now, the game has been in public alpha since early 2013 after a successful Indiegogo campaign. But don't let the word alpha scare you here. The game is more feature-rich and flat-out fun than several fully released games I've played, and is available to anyone who pre-orders from the website, link in the video description below. The alpha status does have certain implications, however. First among them, the game is being actively developed, and while large sweeping save game destroying changes haven't happened in my personal experience, some things do change under your feet with little warning. Though if you're active on the forums, you'll find all the warning you could ever want about the big changes coming down the pipe. That in turn means that bugs do slip in from time to time. Thankfully, whenever anything nasty has snuck its way into the code in my experience, a patch is be no more than a few hours to at most a day or so away, probably thanks to the aforementioned bug hunting hedgehog. But with all that said and done, let's check out the game. Now this is the main menu and from here you can immediately see some interesting options, namely mods and map editor. I'm not going to be covering these, if only because I haven't really played around with them much myself. I've not really installed any mods, though I know quite a lot of people who have, and there are quite a lot of uh, mods available on the forums. Nor have I played around with the map editor just because I've been too busy playing the game, really. But uh, that is an option for those who are interested. As for options, you've got your run-of-the-mill options here. Though I imagine the ones you'll be spending most time in is graphics and controls. But uh, to give you an idea, the options themselves, as this game is a game in development, quite active development, it isn't necessarily very fleshed out. You've got options for things like turn, uh, showing smoke or clouds, but also mini-map or showing the direction a inserter, which we'll get to later, is, is pointing which way it'll insert things. <laughs> that sounded so much better in my head. But, um, for example, you can turn full screen on or off, but you haven't got options for resolution. And, and more than anything else, I find that this option screen is more of a UI settings rather than actual graphic options. So there are little bits in there like multi-sampling. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start playing. Now, there are a few different game modes, namely campaign, custom scenario, which is like um, custom campaigns that other people have made, probably with a map editor, and then new game. Now, the campaign is interesting. It's basically a tutorial of sorts, or at least the earlier levels are tutorials, and it's very much worth going through the campaign, or at least, again, the earlier levels, just to familiarize yourself with the game. But uh, later on, it becomes more of a, an actual campaign sans tutorial. But still, I tend to go straight for this. This is basically the sandbox mode as far as it goes. You've got a, a slew of options here that can uh, change the type of land that you're going to generate, how hard it's going to be. Generally, I actually make it a bit harder, make the land a bit bigger, make the enemies a bit more aggressive and have their larger bases. And in, in ways, that actually makes the late game a little bit easier and less grindy. But uh, one thing I've never done is turned on peaceful mode because... It would be like Minecraft without zombies. What's the point at that point? I may as well be playing Minecraft without zombies in creative mode. But no, I, I actually like the enemies. It gives a, a nice uh, threat. And it actually ties into some of the other mechanics that I'll get to in a moment. Now, depending on your settings, generating a new land can take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. But thanks to the wonders of modern technology, I can just cut that weight out in the video. But as I was saying, do be prepared if you've got a very large world generating to have a little bit of a weight. Now, this is Factorio Freeplay. Your task is to prepare the planet for colonizing forces from the Earth. Landing ships would be an easy target for attacks from the native bases. 
However, they can be protected by rocket defense. You will need to research advanced technologies in order to unlock the rocket defense and other advanced technologies in order to just survive up to that point. Start small, work your way up with an automation, uh, sorry, with automation, and don't forget to protect from the natives. Now, I guess the first thing I would say about this game is that in many ways it feels a bit like Transportation Tycoon. If anyone has played that game, uh, once you've got like automation that it was talking of there, conveyor belts moving things around to various factories to, pro uh, to produce end ways that will be possibly used in another factory or in the researching labs, it really does start to feel like the production chains in Transportation Tycoon. Now, let's have a quick look at the map. Oh my lord, we have no copper on the map. That is uncommon and quite a pain. We need to go for a wander. Now, as you can see, this is coal over here. Some stone up there. There's also iron on the map, and these are various ponds. Ah, there we are. There's copper. Fantastic. And trees. All of these things are very important to note the position of when you start. Um, got a little bit of iron down there. Okay, we've got most of the things we need right down here with copper over there. We'll probably have to build some sort of expansion base to bring copper to us, I think. Now then, you start with a burner mining drill. And it has some various stats about it, like how much power it has when it's mining, the energy consumption. Though the burner mining drill and the smelter burn fossil fuels directly for their fuel. Um, so this is in relation to how fast they're going to burn through their fuel supply. Um, the mining speed does come into play. There are only two... Um, different mining structures that I'm aware of and pretty much you'll only be with the burner mining drill for a very short time just in the beginning really but I'm just going to show you the the first steps and I'm going to cut to a little bit later when I've got materials to actually start working on the the main bit of the game now first and foremost we're going to need a bit of extra fuel uh, actually do we have any yes we do okay we're going to make a pickaxe first and we're going to use that to cut down some trees. The reason why we need to cut down some trees is we're going to use that to fuel our furnaces and mining drills for now. You can use coal, and lots of people do. They'll just sit around mining coal, but I find it's faster to cut down a tree with your pickaxe than it is to mine coal. Yes, I know. It's not an actual axe. The pickaxe is the only tool you'll have. You can get upgrades to it later on. You can make like a, a steel pickaxe, but generally speaking, you're not going to be doing too much of this labor yourself. Or at least the, the objective is to try and make an, a base that will do it for you. I suppose you could do it yourself, but uh, you'll be here for a very, very long time. Now, we're going to want some iron first and foremost. We will need some stone later on, but let's get these down. Now... You see the little yellow arrow there? That's showing me the direction that this mine, uh, mining drill is going to output its resources. It'll mine from the 2x2 two two tiles underneath it. And as you can see as I'm moving around, it's telling me what sort of resources it's going to be able to pick up. They can pick up more than one resource, like if there was some stone there or coal or copper. Then placing this here would, would output various resources at, at various rates. But we're going to pop that by there. Now, that little sign is saying that it hasn't got fuel, so we're going to put in half of the wood there. Wood stacks in 64, different things stack at different amounts. Now, once that's got something, it'll drop it in front. Uh, which it already has but the reason why it's stopped now is because this is blocked it needs that area to be clear to continue working so we're going to put a smelter right in front of it so this is literally going to output its ore straight into the smelter and the ore is going to show up there now the smelter itself needs fuel so we're going to put the rest of our wood in there and now this is going to start producing some steel uh, iron plates for us which is exactly what we need we are going to need a couple more things but while that is producing a bit more iron for us, we're going to go over here and I'm just going to show you the uh, tedium that is mining manually. I'm only going to need to do this a little bit though, just to get enough materials to make another uh, smelter. And I'll go to until I've got 10 stone. You can see in the brackets there, it's telling me what my total is as I'm mining. Right, we're going to make one of these for now. And the burner mining drill requires three iron plates and three iron gears. We can make the gears directly. Each one requires two iron plates and takes a little bit of time. Or, thankfully, 
if you've got the raw resources, like if the total at the bottom is saying total raw resources, the amount of time, the amount of stone it would need, and the amount of uh, iron plates. If I was to say, yeah, go ahead, make one, it'll use the furnace I've already got, and then use the mining plates to make the gears, and then use the gears to make the, the uh, burner mining drill. And you may have seen it down there. I'll do it again just so you see. It's actually making each component before it gets to that one. That's your sort of construction queue. Now then, we are going to want some stone. We're going to want quite a lot of this initially to, to set everything up. Unfortunately, most of the burner items or boilers require stone in some way because a part of their um, construction is to have the smelter or furnace. So we're going to need a couple of those. We're just mining down some more wood here so we can load this up. We're only going to put half of that in there, though. We're not going to need too much of that, so I don't need it to be creating too much. And here we are making a chest so that we can get around the problem that we were having over there where it just got backed up. So now it's going to just happily plug this along and dump it into the chest. Now, there are other things we're going to need. We're going to need coal, obviously, later on. It's a much better fuel source than wood. It burns for much longer. And later on, it's pretty much going to drive your economy. But we're also going to want copper. Now, we're going to want another smelt of that, so actually I best go back and grab some stone from our now automated stone production. Well, as automated as the beginning of the game gets, anyway. Right, let's grab some of you, and whilst I'm walking up there, I'm going to bring up the map. Now, one of the things that you're going to see eventually on here, we actually haven't seen any, which is quite useful is little, quite bright red dots, and these are going to signify enemies and enemy bases. Now, if I hold down Alt, you'll see a overlay. This is like this reddish area. It shows us where the pollution from what we're doing is. And pollution is pretty much the main reason you're going to get attacked. If we hover over this, it says it's producing 10 pollution, and this is producing 1.8. And later, later on, when you've actually got enemy camps on your map, as the pollution reaches them, it'll enrage the inhabitants and they'll attack your base. They'll come out and just try to break everything. It used to be that they would only break certain things, but they've uh, stopped caring now what they smash. They just want to smash something. Ideally you, really. But uh, we're going to be doing our best not to let that happen. Now we'll load that up there. We're going to need the copper here for a pump. It's probably one of the only things early on that you'll need copper for. Um, well, except for this, actually, because you're going to need the copper cables, but you don't need very much of it to create the power lines to link your electricity using devices. But the pump is the first thing that actually requires circuits. And again, it doesn't take too much. It takes a little bit of, of iron and a little bit of copper. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let everything gather up resources while I'm ferrying wood between them. Oh, there we are. My lord. That was sneaky. Do I not see you on the map? Ooh. That's dangerous. Ah, there we are. I was right next to it. That is a rather large. Holy crap, that's an enormous enemy base. Wow, this is going to be an interesting start. These are spawners. It reminds me a little bit about, of the Zerg, honestly. These are various low-level mobs. They are quite low-level right now. You get much bigger ones, literally in size, and later they have like different colored carapace on their backs that, that denotes very powerful enemies. You really don't want to mess with them because my piddly little pistol and the 10 bullets that I've started with would not do very much with them at all. These are turrets, effectively. They're like worms that spit acid at you. We're going to be avoiding that like the plague. But I am going to cut the video here and hopefully when you rejoin me, I'm not going to be being eaten by all of those weird things you just saw. All right, welcome back. Now, as you can see, I uh, did start producing coal. I... Uh, didn't want to keep having to mine wood for this. And I actually used four of them arrayed around a single large chest. And it is actually very, very full. You can hold down control and pick up everything. In fact, you can do that from the chest. Uh, actually, you can barely see what's there because of all the arrows pointing at it. But you can, a better example is that one. I can just control click on that and it'll pick everything up. Or alt click and you'll pick up half. Quite useful. Uh, these things burn far slower than they mine. Uh, because coal is just that good. So they've been able to produce an enormous amount of coal, and gradually I've built up these resources. Now, we are going to show you 
Well, one of the reasons why we want to move to electricity, I'll quickly give you a demo, actually, because it's fairly easy to, to point this out. Now, you, if we wanted to automate this, right now, I'm having to ferry coal around. That's no good. No good at all. So, what we might want to do, and when you're hover, hovering over something, you can just press R to rotate it without having to break it down and build it back up. Conveyor belts, thankfully, don't require any resources. So that's useful. Uh, sorry, any uh, energy. They do require resources, unfortunately. It would be very useful if they didn't. But uh, let's say we wanted to power this with the coal it's mining. It seems like a reasonable thing to want, honestly. So we'll have this like that. And uh, again, these probably should be using power, but they don't. And it's just as well they don't. Otherwise, this would be very, very hard to power your base. This is currently dropping the coal there. It's being spirited away. It's only dropping it on one side of the conveyor belt, interestingly. If I rotated this, it'd be dropping it in the middle. Let me do that, just to show you. So, uh, this middle bit... Oh, no. Oh, actually, it's changed. It used to drop them in the middle, but now it's going to one side or the other. But if I were to t take this up and place it back down, there, you'll see that this will fill up this side of the conveyor belt. So each conveyor belt has two sides, and it's quite important to note that because it comes into play later on. You can have different things on each side of the conveyor belt. In fact, you can have different things on one side of the conveyor belt, but that does make things a little bit more complicated to work with. Now, if we wanted to automatically load this, we can't just have the conveyor belt pointing back at it. It doesn't work. So we'd want something like this, an inserter. Now, this is an electric inserter, which we can't use right now because we're not producing electricity, but a burner inserter we can use. So we'll make one of those. Now, the burner inserter, place it by there. It requires fuel. Let's drop in some fuel. And now, uh, let's actually empty you out. This will just happily stock this up with fuel now. It'll only stock it so far. Once it's got a lot of fuel, It'll stop. Like, at, at five, it doesn't try to load anymore. It tries to conserve what, it, what it's got. And once this is blocked, this will actually stop trying to produce. So it won't actually use up any more of its coal. So it is an efficient system. But the problem that you've probably already noticed is, is if this uses fuel, well, it's all well and good me automatically refueling this, but what's refueling the thing that's refueling it? Therein is the problem. You get this kind of chicken or the egg scenario. So what we want is the electric inserters. Now, let's get rid of you. We don't really... Uh, actually, for now, yeah, we'll, we'll leave you there, actually. That's kind of a good setup. These two, though, we're going to turn you off. Now, thankfully, we haven't been attacked, and I'm, I'm kind of surprised that we haven't, considering the amount of pollution we've been producing, but that is one of the reasons why I've still been only running on one burner on each other type of source. I needed quite a lot of coal to run all of the things that were using it, but uh, I didn't increase the amount that I was mining of these. As a result, it's taken me quite a couple of minutes to get all of this done. You could speed this up if you weren't under the constant threat of alien shenanigans. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a steam engine. Steam engines will use hot water to produce electricity. First in that is a pump. Now, there are different ways that you can set all of this up, and I tend to like trying to be as compact as I can. But you should always build with a view to expansion in the future. So we're going to pop that pump there. We're going to get, uh, let's see, uh, three of these, or five. Now, what I would typically try to do is have that like that, and then I could place another pump there, although it might need to be a little bit further along. But you'd see what I mean. And then... The, the reason why you might want two pumps is one pump can only move a certain volume of water. And after you've got enough steam engines running off one pump, they'll start to lose effectiveness. So you need another pump to top them up, make sure enough water is getting to them. We won't have to worry about that, though, in this video, so I'm not going to do too much of that. Now, these are quite nice. Pipe to ground. Now, what this does is we place that there, and that dotted line there can only stretch this far. But there is a pipe now running underneath but I can walk freely, whereas this blocks my progress. That's quite a useful thing to do, and I, I do tend to uh, use those sorts of things quite extensively in my builds. Now, we're going to want this coal to get to these boilers. We're going to have, let's say, two to start with. We don't want to produce too much pollution early on. Now, these require fuel, as you might expect. We'll place this there, and then we'll build a steam engine. 
Now, the nice thing with pretty much everything in this game, it, it's, a, it's a pretty common theme. If it isn't required, even though this could do a certain, like, a good example is these, actually. It's not running right now, and thus not burning fuel, because it can't produce anything. It's blocked, so it's not trying to use the fuel. In the same way, if this is only needing a certain amount of energy, not nearly as much as it's capable of producing, it'll only be boiling, uh, using some of the hot water that's available. So these boilers won't be burning through all of their coal all the time, because they'll only heat the water that's needed. It's a very, very nice system. Now, we're not going to worry about these burners. We're going to go straight to electronic inserters, or electrical inserters. There we go. Unfortunately, they're not powered right now. For that, we're going to need a power line. We'll only need one at the moment, because one can reach it all. But now you see that this, that little plug icon is gone there. It's because it is now actually covered by the uh, electric grid, if you like. These, though, they're not receiving energy, so they've got a different symbol to this fuel symbol. But we're going to stock these up, probably notice both of them going, and you'll gradually see the water temperature rising. It's 15 down here, 37 past the boilers, but you've seen that one has stopped now. It's because it isn't needed to produce the power that's required. So this is running very, very low. Available for performance. Uh, you can see that the, the green bar is showing you how much of the available performance it's, it's taking. Um, or rather, how much is available. That is going up as the temperature is going up. But the performance is still extremely low. It's, it, you can't even see any green on the bar. If you right-click on a power pole, you, or anything really that uses power, um, the boilers themselves, I believe, you can actually see the use of electric across your base. And everything that uses electric will be listed down here, and everything that produces it will be listed down here. And you might end up with quite a lot on either list, and, the, and these bar graphs start to show interesting things. Now, we want this coal to come down there. So let's just pick that up there. If you hold down F, you'll just grab stuff. So we're going to uh, run this coal line straight up here. Oh, we're going to need a little bit more. Now, that will be able to reach this because it's right in front of it. This one can't. So you don't actually need to put the coal right up the conveyor belt in line with it. In fact, if you do, the stuff at this top edge won't be um, able to be accessed. This can't access those two. So eventually, you'd just be wasting it. But now that we've got that, why do we want these? We don't, is the answer. We want an electric mining drill. Now, these have the benefit of actually mining faster, and uh, they mine a much larger area, which I'll show you now. So we'll get rid of that. We'll also get rid of this chest and pick up all the coal that was there. Now, this mining drill, as you can see, the area of effect of its mining is quite substantial. This one mining drill will mine a 5x5 five five area, so we're going to place it there. We're also going to get rid of you, and we're going to make another one and place it on the bottom. Now, this is pretty much the way I usually start. I always try to automate fully my power supply. That is the, the, the main thing that I, I start with, because I figure that everything else can be run, uh, can be automated later on. Whereas, as long as I've got a steady supply of coal, everything is going to run. But if this breaks down, then everything turns off. And one of the things that you may have noticed there is this is receiving power because the top left corner is just under the area of effect of this small electric pole. There are different types of electric poles, and they have different reaches and that sort of thing. So this is our first bit of automation. It doesn't really look like much yet, but we will get there. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is start automating the production of iron. We're not doing it very fast at the moment, and that is a problem. We don't actually have very many good sites, though. We could do it by there, I suppose, but I think we might want to set something up over here. So I'm going to pause the recording. You've already more or less seen what I'm starting to set up. We're going to create some mining drills, some conveyor belt, and then set up some automated smelting. So I'll bring you back when I've done that. Okay, I got things set up. We're starting to mine some iron, and I'm just going to show you that whilst you're producing things you can carry on moving around and doing stuff the only problem is if you try to make anything else it'll go to the end of the queue now you'll have noticed that i brought a conveyor belt all the way down from up near the coal mining along with the power and that is because we're going to need both coal and iron now what i'm going to show you here is one of the nice uses of the the fact that a conveyor belt has two distinct sides 
we are going to try and put coal on one side because a, a smelter needs coal and iron and iron on the other now if we do this right then what will happen is there we go it's not turning into a curve it is two sides are putting onto a distinct new belt so we're going to go up there and we're going to set up an inserter to pull coal off this one and bring it down to the bottom ah damn it oh well i'll put another electric pole over here there we go right that'll start bringing coal down to us now there is a, 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 an amount of smelters at the optimum per mining drill i haven't worked what it out uh, out what it is so i'm just gonna build about i don't know uh three per or maybe four per yeah we'll do four on each side there we go now we're going to need some power uh right actually i'll put this in the middle like that and this will allow us to get the inserters working properly there we go that will cover the inserters on both sides so we'll have one there and as you notice, the wires will connect to various points. You can get them into quite a tangled web, honestly. It's a little bit painful on your eyes, but uh, I'm sure that's actually useful in quite a lot of situations. Now, let's start pulling all of this in. Now, the inserters will understand what they need to insert. So they're not only going to insert one thing from one side, and another thing that I should actually point out is the inserters will always insert, when they're taking something and putting it onto a conveyor belt, they will always put it onto the furthest side of the conveyor belt. And that is quite important to remember. So now we've got all eight of these smelters working full time on getting us iron plates. But that's not all we want to do. We actually want to get the iron plates out. So what we're going to have to do is get some more conveyor belts, which I'm going to need a lot more of. In fact, we're going to need a lot more inserters as well. Damn it, I'm not prepared. But we'll place that over there. And that was just that I was too far away to, to use that properly. And we'll, for now, although usually I wouldn't do this because it kind of blocks me off from uh, expanding, I'll place this on this side for now. We're going to need one power source about there. However, although I don't want to have to split any of these first taste videos up, we are running out of time. The recording set for this one actually went to about an hour. There's just too much to show in this game, despite it being alpha. So I'm afraid I'm going to be splitting this up. However, if you would like to click on the link, either in the video or in the video description, that will take you directly to part two, where you'll be able to see exactly what I intend to put all of these iron plates to use doing, namely in research labs and eventually combat with the aliens. And as an added bonus, because there's really never going to be enough time to show you enough of this game, I will give you a glimpse of a much more advanced base that I've been playing for some time. So I hope you've enjoyed this part. I hope you're looking forward to the next, but until then, do take care.